Hi, this is Wigglecado. Today, I want to show you how I model this Apple Watch on an iPad Pro by using Nomad Sculpt. Before modeling, I did a lot of research from the internet about this product. My suggestion is to have more references to understand the object better and it also helps to make your work stunning. So I really encourage people to do this before sculpting. Alright, let's jump into this. If you have already watched my previous tutorials, you would know about how I use the remesh method to create the bevel edges. However, it's hard to control the curve I want. In this case, I have found another way to make it more accurate. As you see, I build up the watch face by combining our simple shapes such as sphere, cylinder and box. Then I merge and remesh it all together. This way can keep the curve shape better. You can tell the difference when I put it on side by side. After the edges are done, I duplicate another object for the case and trim off the screen area. I scale down a little to separate it from each other. I add a cylinder and sphere for the basic shape of a sensor. Then I make a hole in the cylinder for the glasses later on. At the moment it is hard to see the reference photo. So I set the overlay function to make it more clearer. Now, I trim off the glasses area and use the mirror option to make it perfectly equal. As well as the glass frames. To make it easy to see, I fill some colors of each component. Alright, let's work the strap connection. I try to trim the shape directly from the trim tool. However, it does not cut all the way through. So I use cylinder to cut a hole first and trim off the rest of it. The crown is created using two. I use the clay tool and turn on the mirror option to draw the grips pattern on the side. I use cell mask to create the side button. I also use a masking for the gap between the button. Then I use the clay tool to create the concave shape like so. I remesh it and smooth the edges, and use a similar way to create the back case buttons. On another side, there are two holes which I need to make. I add a box and remesh it to create a bevel edge. Then I use it to cut it off. The text is created using an image I created from Affinity Designer. I use a stamp tool to print the text. Then I paint a sliver color for the case and crown. Right, the watch is done. Let's work on the strap. Add a torus to match the strap shape first and reduce a sector from the ring using the pink point to fit the shape. Resize the thickness of the ring. Mask the transition area and blur the selection for a few times, then resize it. Trim out the unnecessary corner. For the end of the strap, use similar way to reform the shape by masking. Scale it down and squish it like so. I found it a bit hard to maintain those meshes in the right plate. So, take your time to do it. It is better to scale it down bit by bit. Then trim out the unnecessary area for the strap connection. The inside of the strap has a concave all along. So, duplicate another strap and put it next to each other. Then reshape and cut it. The top strap is edited in similar way. I mask the area I want to reshape and move it bit by bit. I also add a cylinder for a template when reshaping it, so I can easily to follow the round shape. For another strap passing through, I simply trim a hole first. 
Then I mask the edge to scale it down and cut the hole again. I use the flatten tool to make the shape I want. Then I smooth out the surface. The holes in the strap are cut using bunch of cylinders. Duplicate and turn all the cylinders in 10 degrees. Duplicate the entire group to both sides and turn it to match the pattern. Adjust the length of each cylinder where you want to cut the holes like so. Same with the top strap. Smooth out every single hole, even on the back side. Add a cylinder for the buckle and a sphere on the other side. Now, the model is completed. Let's move on to painting. As you can see, I am masking to fill colors in a particular area. This way, I can have very clear edges. I use the same method to color the holes. Just be aware that the mask is all the way through, so it may impact the back area which you can't see. To avoid this from happening, I just make my brush not too big and always check on the back side. I use a metal texture image to fill the buckle and add a watch interface on the screen. Well, all done. Let's review. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.